Hi guys, I'm Seb. Did I do it well? No, you got that completely wrong. But hi guys, I'm Shmi. Welcome to the Shmi Museum. This is awesome. Good to see you. <laughs> you too. You well? Very well. It's been a while. It's been too long. It's been a very long time since we've seen each other as friends, but then also on YouTube. And last time we were in a different garage and you had yeah. a lot of cars already back then, but nowhere near what I'm seeing right now. This is my first time ever here in the Sh Museum. Yep, said it right. Um, <laughs> and we, I thought it would just be cool. We haven't really you know, planned that much. We literally just uh, exchanged a couple of messages and I said, I come over and explore yeah, the Sh Museum, the cars in here. You're going to take me around, give me all the details, but this is so, so sick. Just over a year. Okay. But this is the main hall. There's another hall. Yes. So we're going to go and check that out as well. Um, I mean, things have evolved. Last update, like you said, my cars were in a storage place and I had cars scattered around in different locations. And at that point, I actually had seven cars. And even that meant I had cars in three different places or whatever. And it was, it was that kind of, if I want to film a video or go for a drive in something, it's never in the right place. Yeah. So I always wanted to have my own, like, location and yeah. I have plenty of things that I still want to do so we'll have to touch on like the future plans a bit as well but this came up and it was like right I've been looking for years finally found somewhere and it's I know, ideal yeah and I know that you've seen I think five of the cars that are here yeah so out of the seven cars I owned back then it's amazing that I still own you five still of own them. five of them yeah that's actually really quite yeah. cool even for me but my collection I think is in 20 something nearing 25 cars in total is that what it is now and there are a few that are missing my first thing when I arrived here we first met when you had one car, which is that car, which we'll get onto. It was the in only bit. car I owned. It was the time. only car and started making videos. And we, just before we started filming this, we were like, can you imagine if someone would have shown us this back yeah. then? 11 years ago. Yeah. That's the crazy thing, 11 yeah, yeah. years ago. And I mean, over the years, you've seen a number of the cars, obviously, at different things. And we've filmed plenty of things, like yeah. road trips with the 650S and the M4, and LT and FF and all we that stuff. We went for the collection of the LT, oh, funny, specking of the yeah, LT. Yeah, funny thing, the FF. Stayed at the hotel that we went to in the FF in Strasbourg, again, quite recently. Oh, really? I was like, I remember when I had the FF part right here. That when was we so cool. We, just, we bought it, literally bought it, yeah. hopped in the car, picked up the LT at McLaren Manchester, yeah. which we shipped to Germany, yeah. jumped in the FF, drove over to meet it, and then day one in the 675 LT on Cup 2s, in the snow. Yeah, yeah good many plan. of these. They're all still on YouTube. All these videos are still there if you want to go see them. I was six years old back then. But we had no idea. And even the trip went back with the Z4 and the Mini down in Monaco. Yeah. I spent a month in Monaco in 2012. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, rented an apartment space down there. Yeah, should we, we should, start we should, here? Let's start with this car, because this car is, anybody who knows my channel and the Shmeel 50 stuff knows that we nicknamed the cars the Shmeemobiles. Yeah. This was the first car I ever called the Shmeemobile. And in fact, it was driving this car back then was the first time I ever made a video talking to camera was yes. driving in here. So the and first clip of me ever on YouTube, like myself, was driving this car. Yeah, I remember. Um, this is how I, I saw a video of you and then we exchanged messages and we probably. met in Monaco and, and it was I told around you I'm coming this coming down with it. Yeah. yeah. Because it was the first time I did a road trip like that, sharing videos. It wasn't the first time I'd ever done a road trip, but it was the first time I'd ever done like a vlog. Yeah. I called it Adventures in the Schmiemobile, driving via Paris, picked up Alex Smolik. Yes. And then continued down towards the south of France. We met up and did a whole load of car spotting and stuff. And I mean, I felt like I was living in some weird dream world. I had no idea how that was possible to be driving this car, but. It was oh. the coolest thing. I remember when I saw this yeah. and I was like, oh, I I know someone who owns an Aston Martin. <laughs> It was, it was so sick. Well, I then sold it in June 2012, just before the big month in Monaco. Yeah. But I completely randomly, while I was looking for the car, the car actually found me last summer. Okay. And I say that because the then owner took it to an event saying whose car it was on a piece of paper in the window or whose former oh, car yeah. it had been. And okay. somebody else reached out to me saying With a photo. that was yours. Yeah. The slightly funny thing is that it actually said this car was previously owned by Tim Burton. I think mm. he thought the director, Tim Burton, not me. Anyway, managed to track down the car itself, made contact, went to drove it. He, he saw how much I appreciate, enjoyed driving it again yeah. and said, if I wanted it, here's the price. And I said, done. Amazing. So and then and you've, you've done some work to it since, right? Had it completely redone, up to McGurk. You know, with something like this, it's such a personal thing. Yeah. Like there's no, it, it's not necessarily about the outright price. Yeah. It's about, I, this is this was my old car. Yeah. So whatever is, state yeah. it was in, I was going to buy it, but it needed 
a massive amount of overhaul. Okay. Little oil leak, bits that just needed Especially because you're very OCD with shape. your cars. You know, it's, I'm never going to sell it again, right? So yeah. we'll have it forever and notice it's even got the same plate back on it. Yeah, so because this is kind of like your flagship plate. Yeah, it was right? always the plate on the Schmiemobile, yeah. should we say. Um, I've always loved it. I was born in 87, TB are my initials, and it's kind of symmetrical. Yeah, if you imagine no, it is very cool. So mathematically, it's very pleasing. Yes. You know, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a it really nice good. plate. And because um, you've done the interior and everything. Or? Yeah, it's been it's been made into a really proper con condition yeah. good car, cool. but it had to be. I didn't think I'd ever see this again. No, well, I, I didn't either for a long yeah. time. I didn't see it for nine years. So cool. Which is crazy. We'll, we'll go through all the cars, but also just quickly, this is this is really nice, what you've done with all the posters. Yeah, these, here. these big like banners, uh, tapestries hanging up. I went for a mix of brands that I have right. lots of cars from or uh, you know some kind of connection to. Favorite racing drivers, so okay. Hamilton, Schumacher and Senna. Yeah. Um, and just things that connect, like Ford, yeah. 1966, just fun things in Nürburgring, it's been so long there. So I think that kind of thing adds so much personality and character to a garage. Yeah. It's actually yeah, like, definitely. It's the cheapest, easiest way to make a space yeah. more your own. Because you need to, it's, it's, when you see it in video, I've seen a lot of photos and videos here, it feels big in those, but when you come in here, it's massive. Oh, this space is huge. And you need to fill that out somehow. I mean, it, it's starting here behind us, we'll show that like, in a bit. But. Including the whole lot. It, it's it's a big old space. It's People huge. don't realize, and you're not the first person who's come yeah. in and said, whoa, I had no idea, because cameras make it look way smaller. Well, I even, mean, for example, the distance between the, the oh, yeah, two lines of cars, so yeah, it doesn't need to be this big, and yeah, you could easily fit a third yeah. row. Yeah, yeah, you could pull these ones forward a meter or two and have a third row of cars down the back. Let's, okay, let's do cars. And then we'll, there's so many things to talk about. Because there's also all the games and toys yeah. and silly stuff. Um, this may be a long video. <laughs> um, yeah. Obviously, you've seen and have you been in the GT? You've certainly been in the GT. I haven't been in the GT, but so, um, I, I mean, I love this car. So this was kind of an unintentional planned double pairing when they arrived a day apart. Yeah, I remember that. At the that. end of 2018. Literally, I took delivery of them one day after the other. I parked the Ford GT up in the garage at 9 p.m. and at 9 a.m. left to go and collect the Senna. One of the most outrageous 24 hours I, I on car YouTube. I did not know what YouTube. was going on. I did not have a clue what was going on in my own life. The paint on this is beautiful. Yes, it's called liquid red, multi-layer red. And then I did the bespoke Alan Mann racing gold stripes because yeah. back in the 1960s, Alan Mann racing was a British race team running the GT40s. Right. And they actually did really very well. They were very successful. And they had a huge driver lineup. People like Jackie X, Jackie Stewart, Bruce yeah. McLaren, like yeah. loads of big names racing for them. And I reached out to Henry and Tom Mann, sons of the late Alan Mann, um, to ask them if I could do the car as a tribute. And they actually provided me with some samples of the paint. So very those cool. samples went direct to Ford to do this. So really a lot cool. of sentimental value. Oh, the, this car has so much sentimental value. This will forever be here, right? Like, hopefully. quick summary. First factory car with bespoke painted stripes. Right. Number 80 of 80 of the first batch European cars before the new ones with OPFs and stuff. So like, And that makes a big difference. We spoke about this a lot. Sounds better, when, yeah. goes better, yeah. Only one, I believe, in the world with OEM bespoke stitching inside. Oh, so really? I had factory red and gold stripe uh, stitching on the seats and steering wheel, yeah. direct from Sparker who make the interior. And the same with the shift paddles in gold. There's no other car. So this is a complete one of one. Yeah, and yeah. I took it to the US. And, yeah, yeah, that was like, so cool when you took it and road tripped it. Yeah, so US. that that for me, this is my like, like really special one. Yeah. I'm not going to drive it that much going forwards because it's too special and yeah. valuable and whatnot. But yeah, it's done 8,000 miles. I've driven it, I think, on 10 different racetracks. It must be one of the higher mileage GTs. Well, somebody recently auctioned, but it didn't sell, a 50,000 mile car. 50,000 mile new Ford GT. It didn't hit reserve, unfortunately, so it was hard yeah. to gauge what the price of that would be, but Yeah, I mean, that's crazy. niche though. Okay. Then this, Senna, we actually you know, did, I think we did a full video, well, we did on the French channel, I'm not sure on the English channel, but yeah, this you, still looks amazing. You came out for a ride with me in it when it was brand new and probably only had 500 miles on the clock yeah. or something. Yeah. which is mad to think of now. 4,000 now, I know it's not loads, but with a car like this, you don't just jump in it and drive it. Yeah. 100 miles, go somewhere boring. You only drive it if it, you're doing something exciting. Short distances, um, yeah. And you know, I've had this all across Europe in different places. Pretty much all the cars here have driven the Nürburgring, like nearly every car. So cool. I've never driven the Nürburgring, never. Well, yeah, there we go. We've got that's gonna be a video future. soon, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, Senna is, when it comes to track driving, is just ballistic. And you know, talking of cars that aren't here, um, my latest acquisition is the Zenbo. Yes. Which is obviously these on even more steroids because it's, it's just like dramatic overload. That's actually at the factory at the moment, just having some final like tweaks and things yeah, done yeah, to yeah. the mapping and before it comes back here because it's never yet been here. And you've but you've already done quite a few miles, no? You I've done about a thousand kilometers. So oh, wow. I took delivery of it in Denmark, drove it to Copenhagen and back, 
shipped it down to Croatia to take part in the Supercar Owners Circle event. Then after that, having driven it for a week or so, sent it back to the factory to do a few final fixes and stuff. I did a school internship when I was 13 or 14 at the Zenvo factory. I think and I did know that, but I forgot it. So I was there for a week, do it, like making coffee, uh, going around, yes. like doing everything they needed me to so do. like two years ago? Yeah, yeah, this was only about six months ago. I just okay. got back, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but yes, and I, I never experienced one of the cars while I was uh, doing this internship. So when it's back here, I'll, I'll come back. come and, and enjoy it properly. This, by the way, can I just say how hilarious the carbon... Um, plate plate. Oh, I just left a little... The dust line sorry. Dusty cars. Oopsie, sorry. This is beautiful. The yeah, paint so on go, this. We go from crazy to a different kind of crazy, right? The STO, Super Trofeo, Monogato, crazy loud V10, silly thing in so many ways, it doesn't make much sense, but that's a Lamborghini, right? Yeah. It's loud, it's brash, it's in your face. And it's funny because so many people get really riled up by the color scheme, like really riled up. I think it's I saw amazing. this online, it was when you added the when yellow. I added the yellow. It's amazing how much people get like bothered by it. Yeah. And I'm like, if you're gonna spec a Lamborghini to make a splash online and yeah. brighten thumbnails and stuff, yeah. Duh. Yeah, of course. <laughs> now this is it. I mean, the paint is amazing. So this is wrapped, right? Yeah, the purple's painted because they, at the time, but this was quite an early car, you couldn't get the contrast. Oh, the, okay, yeah. Yeah, they, they... So you've done it like the original contrast Like it would be painted. Scheme. Okay. Yeah, with the option to go back. A few cars have random wrapped bits here and there. And how come the, why an extra plate there? Oh, I there? just need to change it because there's something wrong with the quote on Oh, well. okay. But I might be about to sell it, I don't know. So is this one that could potentially... I, I don't you know. You don't know, you'll I see. Don't know. Yeah. We'll see, we'll see. Maybe by the time the video goes out, it's yeah. gone or something. That will confuse everyone. Now, given we referenced the FF earlier, I had yeah. a GTC 4 Lasso V12. Okay. I had one. So I had the FF for two years, sold it. A year later, bought a Lasso. Had that for two years, sold it. And a year later, bought another Lasso. What, how come? Why the change? Because you can't live without a Ferrari V12 in a car collection. I really, I really struggle without mine. Yeah. <laughs> I've never had one. <laughs> but there you go. But yeah, these are very cool. I remember yeah. us getting the FF. That was one of the cars we, I have the best memories in. That was such a great car. It's a really nice spec. What, what, what blue yeah, is so it? I, a... I bought this car on the spec. When I saw this for sale, it was like done. Um, it's called Blue Potsy. Um, which is named yeah. after Potsy Ferrari, which is the dealer in Paris. Yeah. They used to run race cars in this color back, back in time. Um, but the interior is the exact same color as my SF90. This is random though. This is awesome. This is really awesome. So this belongs to Max Cooper, founder of Gumball 3000. Hence the yep. Gumball 3000. It is an XJ220S. There were six original XJ220Ss, then there were three that were converted a few years after. So this okay. was delivered as an XJ220 and then it was upgraded to S specification. Okay. But it has high 600s horsepower, it's only about 1,200 kilos. Proper animal, like, really rare. These must be worth a fortune now. It's a good half a million or so. Oh, wow. Just crazy it's thing. Anyway, Max wanted huge. somewhere to store it, and I was like, yeah, we'll have it. It's massive. Um, like, so to walk, that, that's a proper Oh, it's probably the walk. longest car here. It's like five meters something long. It's, it's huge, and it makes the Lusso look tiny, which is normally a very, yeah. very long car. But he's had this for a long time, Max. Yeah, this has done gumballs 20 years ago. Um, we come over to the lift side. I got these Benpack Auto Stackers, and I might have put a lot in very quickly, so that's why they're all down right okay. now. Because So wait, cars that aren't here quickly. Zenvo's out, obviously. Yeah. My Shelby GT500 Mustang. Right. I bought in America, drove 12,000 miles around the US, did gumball in it this year, and now it's on a boat on the way here. Okay. So that's gonna be cool. Okay. Lime green. Very cool. AMG GT Black Series. Yes. Has gone the oh. other way. It's in Florida at the I moment. I'd love to see that. I'm soon heading out to go and do a tour across the US and back with it, which will be really cool. Clio V6, recently purchased a Clio V6. My first car, which we'll talk about on the other side, Those was a Clio. Awesome. Yeah, so I bought a V6. We've been doing it up, really nearly finished. That's super exciting. Um, and the other car that's not here is a Mercedes-Benz E500, okay. which we use as a bit of a tow car to tow the Clio around. Yeah, which I was telling uh, Tim earlier, you, you are aware that car rentals do exist and you're like, no. You just, buy it. Just, it's fun. You figure out a way it's to fun. buy it. It's fun. It's an E500. It's a five litre V8 from 2003. Very you know? cool. Come on, like, just go with it. So um, these, wait, so the lifts, you, you just press a button and... Yeah, it's up like it goes, the yeah. easiest thing. I can't do it right now because we'll set alarms off. No, 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 center. of course not. Yeah, this is really this classy. Is super, yeah, this is very classy. I have to be honest, it's probably about to go because I just need to clear up some stuff and I'll, there are a few other cars I want to buy. And but what made you buy, what made you buy this? It's so cool. Yeah. One of five or six in midnight blue. It's, it's kind of, oh no it isn't, it's much more, I was going to say it's a similar-ish to no, the Lusso, but it's much more clear, yeah. I just decided to, uh, it, it's always been one of the cars I wanted to own for a bit. So yeah. back when I owned that original V8 Vantage, yeah. I dreamt of upgrading it to a DBS, couldn't afford one at the time. 
went down a different path in the end. And I always wanted to know what this would be like to own. I've yeah. owned it now. I've done a road trip with it. Took it across Germany. I've done a couple of thousand miles. And it's an it. auto or a manual? This is an auto. This okay. is an auto. It's really funny though. In the UK market, these are way cheaper than other regions. Mm. Like this is a, let's say high 70,000 car here. Oh, wow. Pounds. But in the US, it would be $120,000. In Germany, it'd be 110,000 euros. I think, I feel like, like there's a lot of hype coming around these again. Um, yeah, I don't, know, I don't know why they're so soft here in the UK, but at that price, current market price, if I was gonna advertise these two cars, that would actually be more than that. No way. That Focus oh, RS would have a higher- Because this is a heritage? Yeah. Yes, okay. but just from a like, get your head around that point of view. A V12 yeah, Aston Martin nuts. is cheaper than a yeah. Ford Focus. Yeah. All Can 50. I stand on these? Yeah, yeah, of course. All of these are the same color, T4 orange. Um, site power upgrade from the standard Focus RS, 375 horsepower. Fun thing that connects to the Ford GT though, is that Alan Mann Racing, back in 1968, used to run the Escort Mark 1s. The Focus is the, let's say, spiritual successor of the Escorts, right? This was introduced as the tribute in 2018 for the 50th anniversary of the Escort Mark 1, which was launched in this color. Okay. Right? So 50 years later, 50 cars. Yeah. Guess who won the British Touring Car Championship in 1968 in a red and gold? Allen. Yeah, Allen yeah. Man Racing. So to me, it's like, this is a pair. Yeah. This is like, these are together. So this will stay. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I couldn't yeah. like not. And I know. guess this compared to, in terms of maintenance costs and oh, everything. Oh, it's easy. Yeah, it's Pops easy. Pops to a Ford dealer every others. year for a couple hundred quid. And off you go. Because like something like the DBS is Yeah, much more goes wrong and it costs a lot more money to fix it when it does. Yeah. C63 Black Series. Do you know, a lot of people come here and they actually run straight to this. W204 yeah. generation C63. A surprising number of people go like, yeah. that's my It has a grail. huge fan base, yes, this car. Yes, huge fan base. This car needs some work, I'm not gonna lie. I bought a car that's not necessarily perfect. It needs some paint. I'd like these to be back to factory silver okay, and stuff. Yeah. I've just not done it yet. Um, it's something to work on in the future. This um, was all carbon. They were all originally with all the carbon around? Or? That's an optional package. They oh, sold okay. the Aero kit for a whole lot of money and not very many people bought it. Oh, wow. So an Aero kit C63 Black Series is worth like, a lot more. Yeah. Like, I think in the UK, there were maybe 33 originals and only 15 had the Aero kit, okay. something like that. So it's oh, wow. one of not very many. And the Aero kit is what? So these, the wing? The big wing at the back and the carbon flicks yeah. around the side. But um, it's not just like sticking a wing on the back. It's a different boot lid. It's a whole oh, different wow. thing. So an aero yeah. kit car is like worth yeah, yeah. it because it costs more than the 20 grand it cost originally yeah. to do the aero kit now. This oh. is the very, very last Elise Cup 250 final edition. Belongs to a friend of mine. He allowed me to collect it. He's allowed me to drive it. He's allowed quite a few people to drive it. Yeah. And in four months, it's done 11,000 miles. Nuts. In a car that's not very fun to drive for and a it, long distance. <laughs> the, yeah, for a long and distance. Beyond the obvious, what it is, the color. The color is called Luminous Orange. It is a 14 layer paint that came at 14. vast expense. Yes, 14 layers. It is RAL 2005, which is so bright in some countries, it's illegal to display on television. Obviously the number plate, I'm just gonna have to say, is like so perfect for the final. Yeah. At least Very 250, cool. like fine. Yeah. You couldn't get better. The idea with it though, is when a color is this bright and vibrant, it fades, whatever you do. Park okay. this outside for a day and it will fade. Wow. Okay. It's been yeah. used, it's been outside and it's already starting to fade, but the owner sees it as like a patina. Like yeah, when so it's that's gonna be weird and blotchy and faded, that's the story of the car. Yeah. Like that's yeah, well, it's, that's exactly what you need. You need an owner like that, that will yeah. use it. We'll see that, because or else yeah. it's just a car you'd never take out. He's, he's somebody I met like a decade ago okay. on a tour of hypercars back then, driving cars, getting out there, and we've done many drives actually over the years since. Yeah. And some really cool stuff. Um, so he's got some He's got some other nice cars, toys, some yeah. really nice toys, and he's an amazing guy, and he said, have some fun with it, guys. So Very cool. It lives here, which is, I'm not complaining. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's amazing. Like, this is the world's loudest car. <laughs> it's pretty silly loud from factory, stock exhaust. Yeah. Um, Aston GTA, one of 150. I actually bought this because of it being the last one of those. You know, having oh, I my, see. So having cool. that being so the you first. your first Schmemobile, and then the last This was ever. the final edition V8 Vantage that they made. They only made a few of them. Manual gearbox, naturally aspirated engine, very like, cool spec as well. Silly, 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 overpriced, yeah. whatever, but amazing. Have they held their value pretty well? It's down slightly on what it costs new, yeah, but yeah. like a yeah. few percent. Not, but not it's, it's, it's cool to see how many have a story. You haven't just gone out and bought the cars for the sake of it. I, I mean, There's a story behind pretty much I every single one. I care so much more about cars having a reason. It's, mm. no, it's never, even the specs, every spec has a, yeah. like a choice, or yeah, yeah, yeah. even more than I'm perhaps saying now behind it. I feel like you can just walk into a dealer and buy a car, right? Yeah. Just on a whim, but for me, 
if you've got a reason for it, you have so much more connection with it. And especially in the videos I share, people see why I, you know, they, yeah. they see what the, the reason and everything behind it was. And that's probably also why you're left with so many. It's because when you've got a story, can't you can't them. sell them. <laughs> no. yeah. yeah, Something like the SLS. You know, I, I bought this uh, two and a half years ago a month before the world shut down in 2020. And at first I was massively like, oh dear, oh what God. have I done? Yeah. What have I done by a really expensive car right before a massive economic crisis? Yeah. And then I resprayed it and then I upgraded it and then I drove it loads. Value wise might not have been the smartest. However, same story again. The SLS Black Series was one of my dream cars prior to that. The first time I drove one, I guess six years ago or so, I was just like, this, this is like the car yeah. that I want to buy. Yeah. I mean, the I other cars on my me dream cars these. list are yeah. all perhaps currently out of budget, Carrera GT, yeah. F50, yeah, yeah. then this. But the, these are, have been flying well, and the I lucky, think they will The lucky will thing for me flying. is it's now worth double what I paid. Yeah. Easy, if not more than double, yeah. perhaps, which is super cool. I've had to do a lot of work on it because I've driven it a lot of miles and kilometers at high speed, Autobahn, Nürburgring, etc. Um, we just had a full five-figure engine, top-end rebuild okay, yeah. and loads of new parts and things that were needed. But Does it make it easier it. for you to justify that knowing that it's also just going up so much Massively, massively. Yeah. You know, I, I think, you know, if you get a bill for 10 to 20 grand to fix some stuff, yeah, it hurts, always, let's be real. But when you know that the car is worth a big six-figure sum more, yeah. it's like, okay, like, okay. I've got yeah, to. I'll put it yeah. in, but then, okay. My, I'm investing in my asset, basically. Because how many how many were made? 350. It's not That's a lot. lot. That's it's all. really So it's left and drive. Yeah, I imported this car from Germany. Um, and to be honest, out of the 25,000 kilometers I've done with it, 15,000 miles, probably 90% of them have been on the continent. Yeah, yeah. So for me, yeah. a left-hand drive car has that actually been sense. perfect. And is this a keeper? Definitely. Yeah. So. Oh gosh, I'm not gonna try and point out like which cars are keepers keepers. Yeah, yeah. Obviously I'm not gonna sell my first Shmi mobile. SLS Ford GT would never go anywhere. Yeah. GT8, LT probably. Yeah. Uh, others for sure, but one those step are the time. main yeah. very close, yeah. Two more, quite different cars. I mean is this the only one with an electric yeah, it is. Yeah. The only, my only yeah. when I when this car was launched, I initially ordered one. Yeah. So I think it was 2019. Yeah. Similar story, we got to 2020, world's blowing up, and I'm like, Ugh, let's put it on ice and see what happens. When I drove one for the first time, this was one of the few times I've instantly said, I have to have one. I normally buy cars unseen, un unexperienced, you know, when they've been released, order a car. This was like, I drove it and I was like, this thing is phenomenal. It's the, so fast. You've driven one? Yeah, I, I was it's lucky to drive one, yeah. Silly, silly fast, but it's also, and this is what most cars get wrong. As well as being fancy, whatever, it's really nice to drive. Yeah. You can just jump in it and drive it. And I actually commute in it. I drive yeah. it to and from home to here and I, yeah. I, I love it. Do you it's use the electric? Yeah, um, every much? day. Yeah. Every day it's charged up. So the last tank I did, if you measure it out, average it out, whatever, because of the electric charging, I did about 30 mpg, which yeah. for comparison is more than I'll get in my Focus RS yeah. in a 1000 horsepower it's Ferrari. Nuts. Because I'm charging. And, and if you use sure the electric, yeah, well, because you're yeah. not having to drive it all the time, so you can afford to yeah. charge so it up. So because I do short time. hops and I charge it up each time in between. Yeah. MPG I thought this, we, we did a video not too long ago in the 296. Yes. And same thing. I thought, amazing if you can just whack yep. it into electric, drive yep. around, do your thing, and then when you want, it's just unbelievably fast. I'm a bit carried away on that because I've ordered a 296 GTS as well. Oh, yeah, but I think they're fantastic. I think they're so cool. Right. Sorry, we, the, the issue we've had here is the batteries of the camera can't last as long as we're chatting. Sorry. But uh, no. <laughs> anyway, there's so much, there's still we, we so go from much SF90 to see. We to, to van. So I have to admit, okay. I was a little bit surprised by this. I think it's very cool, but it, I wasn't this, expecting to this see This is it. actually um, a long-term loan car that we have here at the barn. It's a Ford Transit Custom from MSRT, which oh, basically means you take your 185 horsepower Transit, give it cool looking bumpers, give it a V8 sound, Yes, one, I heard that. Because there's, yeah. a, there's a switch and there's a speaker installed at the back. It's called yeah. the Maxors. Tom's kind of team car. And then we also have as a team car the Cupra born um, fully electric car. Oh, so same. we say okay. only electrified oh, car, yeah, yeah, I own, but, but that's yeah, fully yeah. electric. Um, I've owned a few electric cars. Uh, my Taycan. I yeah. had a long term Mini Cooper. Range was a problem. This is somewhere in the middle. Okay. It's not as big and unnecessary as a Taycan, but at least you've got. 300 miles of range or so. It looks pretty cool as well. Yeah. I like the rims. This is all obviously for range, right? The wheel design. Yeah, yeah I am not the biggest fan of that kind of thing, but we, we work with C-Tech, so I've got the dual charger oh, yeah. over there, charge storm connected to, which is super convenient. So we can charge up really fast here. Okay. We've got full three phase electricity, so 
car like this charges up in a couple of hours. Oh wow, and you can you could put that anywhere or do you need a specific setup? No, it out? has to be mounted wired into the electrics, but we put it right here just so we've got the two, yeah. two bays effectively right in front of the entrance. Very cool. Which makes it quite easy. So th this is the office. The temporary office until that's the office. Because have you revealed kind of what you're going to yeah, do? Yeah, I've talked a bit about this. Let me give a, a like whistle stop rundown. With so many cars that are like racetrack, yeah. cars, track cars, the theme is to make this like a motorsport venue. Right. So the idea is picture that you have your racetrack coming through the middle. Okay. And this is like your grandstand. So uh. we're going to have the glass office spaces like here, lounge space, office, more offices upstairs. And that will be like your VIP hospitality. Okay. So, so you, you come in. through the glass. And then where the SF90 is, not where the van is, is what we're calling the halo space. So that'll be nicely illuminated and look really cool. Up the racetrack. It's, it's such a kid's kind of dream. Oh, well, the kid's dream stuff is over there. And in here. Yeah. In here, the carpet. Yeah, the carpet's very cool. Who doesn't have one of these when uh, they're a kid? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I had one growing up. I had <laughs> one of these. We all did. And then Lego. Um, you know, I've been collecting Lego for a while. I have pretty much every Lego model car that they've made. Actually, now super exciting. I get to work with Lego as well. I've done some very cool cool. projects. Yeah. Um, also, but just at the moment, some things on display like the F1 car. Yeah. Which is uh, FW19 Williams. Last year, they won the championship. I have the show car number one from that year which is currently out being painted and having some stuff done. But that model is signed by Jacques Villeneuve. Which I saw that cool. video and I thought that was the coolest thing that you had an F1 car in here. Yeah, it's just uh, awesome. it was a crazy story. Didn't really know what was happening. And then just other things on display like model cars and Very some, of the, cool. some of the model cars we've made of my cars and stuff. Yeah, just cool yeah there's things. not too much light. So hopefully you guys could see a, a bit of that. But OK, very cool. So this is yeah temporary kind of so just set squeeze up. up this way. We recently <laughs> set up this a is Carrera awesome. track, which has been the uh, consumer of many hours, I can imagine. say, late into the evening. And you're going to keep this, so this kind of stuff, you're going to leave in this area of the... Of yeah, the this area? is the kind of chill area, like the Twin Arcade Sega Rally. I mean, I remember, obviously, as a kid, this These was, work? Yeah, or not right at the same yeah, yeah, yeah. we plugged That's... in and reconfigured, but they do work. It can be brought back to life. Um, you know, cool. this was in some arcade somewhere. It's been beaten up and bashed and bruised, but... Yeah, it's part of the character. Part of what it is, yeah, I wouldn't mind a few more arcades. These have actually flown up in value. Yeah, These I can kind of imagine. Things. When I bought this, I guess it was about two years ago. Yeah. It wasn't that expensive, but if you look for them now, they're like thousands and thousands. Really? Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. That kind of thing, because everybody Another wants, good purchase. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people want to set up this kind of thing, right, and build yeah. a dream garage, because at the end of the day, that's what this is for me. It was oh, it's a total man cave, dream. car storage, whatever you want to call it. You've got a car for me. Electric go kart. Yeah. You fit in that one? <laughs> no, no, don't electric. worry. But look, no problem. I got loads of leg room. Little go kart. There we go. Again, many hours have been consumed bombing around imagine. the garage in that. And did you do? This is going to be a very technical question. I'm, I don't know how much people will care about this. Did you do all the lighting? So or when, was it like this when you when moved I in? found this place? This was a milking parlor on a farm. Okay. It didn't have a concrete floor. It had no lighting. It was open at the back and the sides. Yeah. So this took a, a lot of time, basically, to get everything done, to get the concrete floor done, to get all the lighting in, to get all the shutters done, to do all the alarms and security yeah. stuff and all of that. Took the first six to nine months, and that was a period of like, come on, let's I go. Can I can imagine. <laughs> I want to move in. And um, it's not even done yet, because uh, shall no. we show? The, or do you want to go up? No, no, we'll go, we'll go to the other side for sure. And now, welcome. There's more. Barn two. I was now, completely unaware of, of this. So I only recently got the keys and there's obviously a lot behind us that, well, cars and stuff. But the idea here is to open a connecting wall. That wall oh, is the back okay. of the other side. Uh, not for like a ramp for cars or anything like that because we're actually at a different height. Okay. So the amount of space we would lose to have a ramp on either side yeah. just isn't feasible. Okay. But the plan is to make this a bit of a workshop. So cars like my Clio V6 and the old Clio over there and some other things, we're going to have a two post and a scissor lift right here. So we can do some of that. Oh, very literally on site. Cool. Okay. And things actually like the Zenvo, crazy thing. Zenvo don't make a lot of cars. So yeah. to service them, it's not like they have service centers in every country. So they send someone. They come to you. So if I have a two post here, they come and service it at my garage. That is very cool. So How convenient cool. as like well. Like flying doctor. <laughs> for you, yeah, literally. But for you, always the logistics of, okay, I need to ship this car here to do this service, to do that, to change these tires, to do this. They're just going to come here. Could you be able to do something where you could change your own tires here? Because that'd be convenient for you. Yeah, eas easily. Yeah. Easily get a tire change stuff. Um, you know, we have the Benpack lifts. Benpack have kindly sent a whole load of equipment and gear, oh, yeah. like oh, engine wow. cranes. And the plan is to, to, to do 
a few things. Got to yeah. learn. Maybe not myself. You know, I might get somebody in who has a bit more skills in that yeah, yeah. area than I do. And okay. then a rally, random rally car. Yes. So I love how we, we've just Elephant casually been talking. Yeah. <laughs> and then we didn't mention this. So okay. I apologize for the echo as well, because obviously we've not done anything about that. Rally car. This is from MSRT, like the van. This is something they actually made as a bit of a demo. So it's a, a show car from a couple of years ago and they've set it up as a VR sim. So VR no headsets, way. screen in the back, full simulator setup. This like, is awesome. Is it open? Yeah, yeah, just pop it open. So you got, okay. So you can go two at the same time. So technically in the garage, oh, although right now the F1's out, we have an F1 show car and a rally car show car. Yeah, very cool. Really cool. Those two, these two next to each other would be awesome. They would be actually. And, and so you got, oh yeah, you got a full screen and stuff if you want to spectate what the person's doing. Very cool. Who would have thought? Yeah. Awesome. Random stuff, right? That's what yeah, it's all about. Yeah, very cool. Um, so this is, are you going to have this for a while or is it? Yeah, for a bit. Okay. At least a few months. We'll see what happens. Okay. And then, um, uh, <laughs> funny. The Clio. You've got a chair, a seat here just to look at it. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know what the guys have been doing. Um, this is identical to the first car I ever owned. It's okay. not the first car I ever owned, but, but I do same. own the first car I ever owned. Got yes. written off, got scrapped, got crushed into a cube. We tracked it down as a cube at the scrapyard. I bought a cube of metal and I own the lump of metal that was my first ever car. Very cool. So I bought a trip. Where is the lump of metal? <laughs> Dub Customs. Oh. And that's Dubs. That belongs to them. We'll get to that. Yeah. Anyway, so got this, put the same plate on it, actually, that I had. Apparently that's failing. Yeah. Um, the same plate that I had on it back on my original one. Okay, on here. So, very cool. Yeah. So, so this was the first actual the first, first car, car I had when I was 17. And over there you have the first supercar. First Schmiemobile. Schmiemobile, yeah. Um, then yeah, this T350 belongs to Dub Customs. They're just doing some overhauls of one of the units they have at their site right now and they wanted somewhere safe to keep this. And I was like, yeah, easy. I've got, I've got the space. Yeah, clearly good. Yeah, you could um, fit quite a few more cars here. Yeah, so. Okay, awesome. It's exciting. It's, yeah. it's so cool. Thank you for taking the time to Absolute show pleasure. us around. I'm glad you're able to come visit and bring everyone along because I mean, been here for Yeah, it is so cool. And honestly, as a friend, I know how much this was like a, a goal for you. So to see you kind of get here is awesome. <laughs> it's surreal. It's yeah. completely surreal. Yeah, and there's a channel for the museum specifically if you guys want to, you know, go go see all of that stuff. That's really it. fun. Bring people behind the scenes of looking after the car collection. Yeah. Some of the yeah. project builds, even just the maintenance stuff, because I think a lot of people have no idea what it's like mm -hmm. looking after 20 something cars. And I think it's, it's many people's to... dream. It's basically everyone who's watching this. <laughs> yeah, it's my dream. dream. <laughs> yeah, so you want to know the reality behind it so that you can set your goal of what you want to aspire to. Absolutely. I know I see this and I go, shit, I would, I would love to do this one day, but I we'll still get can't believe it every day. <laughs> thanks for coming. So good to see you. Likewise. Thank you, guys. We'll see you soon. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, as always. Bye bye.